today in today's session i will take up karmic bondage and coming out of karmic bondage now let me share one experience which i had yesterday so there was this woman this sister who had come to the center and she told me that she doesn't share a very good relationship with her husband and she related that in back in the past you know some 10 15 years back after some years of marriage there was some violence in the relationship so there was some beating and abuse and this stuff and then she told me didi you know it was it was very short lived it's not like he kept beating me for years so it happened maybe 10 12 times but i don't know what shifted after that that i became very fearful and i felt like i'm never comfortable around him after that and whatever i do i always feel like he's watching me judging me or the other people in the family are also judging me and i have lost my confidence and she says otherwise i'm a very confident woman it's not like i am not working or earning or i don't have a good camaraderie at work i'm very uh, efficient in my work i get promoted almost every time there is a scope for promotion and everything but personally i feel like this fear inside me is growing day by day so and then she told me that before i i came to know about the brahma kumari so she had been listening to online classes for some time so she said before that i had i had gone for a past life regression also because somebody suggested and then in that past life regression the person told me that i have a karmic bondage with this soul okay with the husband okay the soul playing the role so now i will tell you what i told that woman and then she asked me a very important question and the question was didi kya aise hi chalta rahega so this karmic bondage then that person comes into your life and then they cause trouble and then there is anger and then there is fear and then again you spend your life in fear and then again you meet the person in your next life so is this cycle going to go on like this forever and that is the questions she was asking and i was very surprised today in the murli mama is answering exactly that and mama says you see this is a cycle now let me tell you what the cycle is so let's say i am a person who has some fear in me let's say i lose one of my loved one in childhood and i live in the fear or i have a relationship which is not working in the childhood and then i have a fear that a similar thing might happen again okay so i fear uh, an unfavorable situation or i fear losing someone in my near future then whatever are my emotions or whatever is going on inside my mind starts attracting my reality yes so that starts manifesting because all our fears will eventually manifest okay so whatever is your fear will manifest in reality now when it manifests then you know you again receive another traumatic blow and then when that blow comes your sanskar of fear gets reinforced okay so 
in this perpetuation of the cycle there are two factors there are circumstances and there are sanskars so there is a circumstance a situation in the first phase where i lose someone or i have an abusive relationship or i you know i don't i don't get the success i think i should get or that which i aspire for and then i create a sanskar of fear of hurt of any kind of sanskar and then that sanskar attracts a similar situation and then i again respond with the same sanskar so you see that the sanskar which is the foundation for attracting the situation is getting reinforced every time so definitely the situation will also recur more and more because the basis is that sanskar which is attracting the situation now when this cycle goes on and on then our sanskar gets weaker and weaker day by day and the situation gets more and more difficult and then it comes to a place where it becomes where you know your heart says i can't manage it anymore and then what baba says is how do you break that cycle so baba says now what do you do is you draw power from me and change that sanskar which is attracting that situation okay so baba says i cannot do anything about the situation per se because that is something you are attracting with your own sanskar so i you change that sanskar so baba gives us knowledge knowledge which changes our sanskar new knowledge which helps us create a new sanskar baba gives us the knowledge that you have the power the happiness the peace and you can you can invoke that or you can draw that power peace and love from baba which is the antidote for the weak sanskar that you are carrying and if you do this inner work for yourself then in the same situation you will start responding differently and then you will start attracting differently because of your responses which are subtle and gross both yes so your response to any situation is both subtle and gross let's say in this particular situation as i narrated i told that sister that once you understand that you are an individual soul and you are very powerful and you don't have anything to fear yes you come to that place of fearlessness by practicing that you are a fearful soul then the next time you feel this sense of fear emerging from you know within whenever your husband is around or whenever there is a similar situation then you have to quell that voice within which says i am afraid i am afraid and tell yourself everything is okay nobody is doing anything to me because all our battles are within and when you win them within then your subtle vibrations and your words and the way you behave in that situation starts changing now you see the other person is also getting signals about what they can do to you through your body language and the words you are speaking and your vibration so once you start having a different response by imbibing knowledge or by building spiritual power within then your vibration starts changing your words start changing your behavior starts changing and the other person also figures out what they can or can't do to you okay so this is how it works 
So basically, ba- Mama today in the Murli says, if you change your action by drawing in power from Baba, then the reaction of the universe towards you will start changing. But how do you change your action by, because the basis of your action is your consciousness and your spiritual stage. So when you start working on your consciousness by imbibing the Gyan that Baba is giving you and looking at everything in a different perspective, and when you start responding to it differently by through your spiritually elevated stage, then you start breaking that cycle. So this is how it happens. Now let me tell you one thing. So when I was um, working some years back, so at that time, there was this one girl who was working in a contractual position in that same office. And then she always came and told me that she has an officer who misbehaves with her. Okay, so then she told me, the Madam Aap Iske Le Kuch Kariye. So I said, how can I do anything about the situation when you are not talking about it publicly? Yes, so first thing first, Whenever that situation comes up, you raise your voice, you know, you, you, you raise your voice and declare that this is the problem here. So she said, I can't do that. So I said, then deal with what makes you, you know, say, I can't do that. Because that is where the problem lies. So I said, you tell yourself 100 times a day, I can do this. You know, whenever something wrong happens. So she said, my inner voice says I might lose my job. So I said, then tell your inner voice, it's okay if you lose your job. It's okay. This is not happening. This will not be tolerated. So you have to tell your inner voice that I am raising my voice, come what may. And then when you are able to work within yourself, then your action will change your destiny. Nobody else can change your destiny. If you come and tell me 100 times also, I cannot change your destiny because if you have the same spiritual stage and same body language, I can protect you from one person, but I cannot protect you from 100 others because everybody will get get the same signal from you. Because if you have a low vibration, yes, so if other people are are able to figure out that if they wrong you, you're going to keep quiet, then they are going to wrong you anyway. So then I kept counseling her until one day she raised her voice. And then when she raised her voice, then there was nothing to be done in the matter because that person himself, he fled that room. And then he demanded that I be transferred to another division. And then he was so scared that he never even you know, uh, exchange glances in the corridor also with that girl. So this is why, you know, we must understand that sometimes it looks like the situation is the problem. But what we don't understand is my sanskar, which is attracting that situation is the problem. Maybe sometimes, you know, you think that I'm not, I'm not doing it consciously, but whoever you are, you know, as a soul and the way you're thinking, the vibrations you're creating, your body language, your words, they communicate to the other person and also to nature, how they should behave with you. And if you work on that, then everything else will start changing. Now, let me talk about physical illness also. So sometimes karmic bondage comes in the form of physical illness. And then what happens? You are very body conscious. And then what happens? You tell your mind, I can't function fully because my body is ill. And then a weak mind 
increases the propensity of physical illness because anyways everything is psychosomatic so when you allow your mind to be weak in the face of a physical illness then that weak mind will ensure perpetual physical illness okay that's why it becomes a cycle so how do you break that cycle you tell your mind come what may i am operating on full capacity <laughs> i am doing what needs to be done i am going to you know uh, be have have a peaceful mind come what may my words are not going to be weak my actions are not going to be powerless so when you make that decision then slowly gradually you start breaking that cycle because this is the cycle your weak sanskar your weak stage is creating a difficult situation and then the difficult situation you are responding by further you know going down in your spiritual stage or creating an even weaker sanskar so and then this goes on and on and on until baba comes and teaches us but the thing is you know here this aspect of yoga is very important because you behave like be, you you behave like the one you have yoga with now let's say you're listening to gyan but then you don't have yoga with baba you have yoga with the body so you definitely have yoga with something or the other right <laughs> so you have yoga with the body your body conscious then what happens you're listening to gyan with the ears but then the physical illness is pulling your attention but when you have yoga with baba what does yoga with baba mean when you really recognize that i am a soul and my only true benefactor is my baba and the only one who matters the only one whose words matter the only one who is the truth the only one who i have given authority over my mind is baba when you are convinced about this when you have done this internal work when you are surrendered to baba completely then baba's words and baba's truth will have sway over your mind rather than anybody else's or the circumstances dictation okay so this is very important this is why when baba comes baba in the murli today says it is very important you recognize him and belong to him yes so you undertook the course do you recognize that this is god your father speaking do you recognize that the knowledge that is being given to you is being given by god your father himself how many of you recognize that so when you recognize that then you make a decision to belong to god because you know when the best comes to you you don't reject it <laughs> or you don't say i'll think about it okay so when you recognize baba and when you recognize that okay this is god and now god has come to my life he is giving me what i have searched for for so long now i give him authority over my life my mind and i allow his words his gyan his you know his sustenance to guide me from here on okay so when baba says you are sweet you say i am sweet you don't say but uh, no no i think i am bitter no when he says you are sweet you accept you are sweet you give him authority to tell you who you are what to do what not to do how to think what not to think and you submit to him fully that's what you need to do to draw in power from baba yes because baba is giving you a very powerful hand but you also need to hold that hand or you need 
to extend your hand so that he can hold it for you. So that's very important because if you don't surrender, if you don't submit, then what happens is you listen to everything, but then that everything is not able to color you because you have not made that mental submission. I will share one personal experience with you. When I came to Gyan, I was working and there was family and there was a lot going on. And then one day Didi told me, why don't you do some seva? So I said, seva means? So she said, you open a center and you know, you start doing some seva. I said, no, 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 I can't do all this. I can't do all this. What do you expect of me? I am all, already, I feel 24 hours is very less for me. You Are you making it 36 or something? No, no, I can't do all this. You don't tell me to do all this. And anyways, I don't have the money. I told her, I don't have the money to now take a bigger place and, you know, uh, fend for it. So then she said, Lakshmi is saying I don't have money and Saraswati is saying I don't have Gyan and Durga is saying I don't have the power. She told me these three sentences in one go and she just left. And then I sat before Baba and I said, now you want me to be Lakshmi, Saraswati and Durga. Okay, so be it. So from that day, I accepted that if Baba asked me to be that, I will be that. And then Baba made sure that the powers also came, the knowledge also came and the resources also came. But you have to accept. If you start saying, I know myself better than my father knows me, doesn't work like that. Your father knows you better than you know yourself. So when he says something to you, when he says you can, you say I can, because you said it. So this is the surrender which, which solves everything, because you know, Baba is here to solve, but then if you surrender, he solves it for you. So when Baba says you have eight powers, you say, yes, I have all eight of them. And you look for them, where are they? You didn't say probably he is mistaken, I have only one. Seven are missing in me, probably there is a manufacturing defect. No, <laughs> no manufacturing defect. <laughs> When he says you have eight powers, you have eight powers. Even if you don't, if you're not very cognizant of it, it's okay. You will recognize them eventually. So, you know, when I came to Gyan, I thought that probably I can never do things with patience. I had very less patience. So, you know, you give me any task, it becomes my life's goal to finish it within half an hour. I thought maybe after half an hour the world is going to end or something. I, can't, I couldn't do anything slow and with patience. I would just be focused at finishing it. And then in one murli, Baba said, Dhyarita, patience is a very good divine virtue of deities and you all have them because you, ha you are deities. And then I told myself, okay, so I have patience, right? It's somewhere inside. I'm not aware of it, but it's there. And then I started calling out to that patience and started doing things with that. And now I have a very patient personality. <laughs> so Baba says that you have everything. And when I, the Father, give you your introduction, you must surrender completely to me that what I tell you about you is 100% true. Every word of the Murli and not only about you. If Baba says every soul, the original design of every soul is benevolent, it is so. Yes, even if somebody looks like a Ravan to you, <laughs> that soul is still a soul. And when you 
when you have that attitude towards them they will also start responding like that to you yes and have you see and you know sometimes when children come to the center they tell me didi this person also comes to the center you don't know they are not like they look in they look like in the center they are a very different kind of a personality when they come in white and all quiet and all peaceful you you might think this person is a saint but he is a devil outside so i said no i like the saint better i would focus on the saint okay so this is how it goes so when you look at the saint the saint emerges when you look at the body the body consciousness gets invoked when you look at a past memory of their abusive behavior their capacity to abuse emerges do you understand so everything you hold the key to it but you have to hold it firm because the lock might not open in once once twice thrice four times but it will open but you have to keep applying the key and the key is your positive attitude towards a situation or a person okay and also deal with that weak sanskar in you which you know which gives a wrong signal or which creates a negative vibration or which tells the other person or nature that you're weak so this is something how you break the karmic cycle and then in mama's vani there is another thing which is very important mama says knowledge is very important for yoga and mama says that it is said that if you don't have proper knowledge then any action can go wrong okay and yoga is also an act act of the soul do you understand yoga is an action of the soul the soul is doing a karma called yog yes now if you don't have proper knowledge of yoga then it might go wrong so let me give you one example so there was this couple husband and wife and they had a son and this son was this son graduated from mit and then he started his company in silicon valley and these parents this couple they were practicing yoga you know by some guru for very long and then whenever the son as a child used to ask what do you do in meditation so these people would say we just sit in silence and experience peace and happiness and this and that so they never told the method to the child and they themselves also didn't know any method because no method is taught anywhere you know you are just asked to sit in silence and just keep allowing your mind to wander until it hits somewhere and then i don't know what happens so then this child did not have an idea about how to go to that experience of peace and happiness so then but he was a seeker because he had seen his parents doing that so he had this desire in him that i should experience peace and happiness in meditation and then when he was in silicon valley he his friends introduced him to laughing gas land laughing gas is not a laughing matter because laughing gas is a drugs it's a harmful drug and then you get addicted to it so now the name is laughing gas so it looks like it's very you know light and hilarious and then he started taking that laughing gas just you know in a very uh, casual way and then uh when his mother used to call him he used to tell her over phone today i also experienced peace because he is smoking or you know i don't know how you take it but whatever he is doing so he is experiencing something inside 
and then he used to tell his mother that I'm experiencing happiness and peace and joy and bliss and then his mother used to tell him are you meditating so he said I don't know but I'm experiencing it so the mother said okay carry on and then the child said tomorrow I will tell you a different stage which I experienced and this went on for six months and it took some time for the mother to realize that the child has become an addict and by that time he had become such a big addict that they had to literally drag him out of the US and bring him to India and then when he was brought to India it was very difficult for him to procure laughing gas but he did that also and then Ultimately, there was a situation when, the par when there was a police raid and the parents had to go to jail because in the raid there it was discovered that there is a lot of drugs in the house. So why I am telling you this thing is because it is very important to understand that meditation is not sitting in silence and waiting for things to happen to you or inducing it physically. Meditation is about knowing that you are a soul, that you are a being of light and that the seven vibrations vital to your experience of life, peace, purity, love, happiness, bliss, power are latent within you and the more you focus on them it gets activated and then when you turn your mind away from this world to, the, to that world of light then you can meet Baba and Baba is the ocean of virtues and understanding those virtues and experiencing them in meditation is a very very conscious act. It is not like you leave it on the mercy of the nature to connive and give you an experience. No. It's a very very conscious act that the soul performs through the man and buddhi. So there are actions of mind, there are actions of words and there are actions of hands and feet. So there are various kinds of actions and, and meditation is an action that the soul performs through the man and buddhi. And until and unless the buddhi has right knowledge, it doesn't know where to direct itself. So when you feed the buddhi that you know you are a being of light sitting here there is a world of light in the beyond and in that beyond there is Baba and Baba is the ocean of purity and what is the feeling of purity, what is the feeling of spiritual love when you give this whole you know knowledge into the buddhi then the mind starts experiencing while being directed by the buddhi so meditation is not something that you leave to the mercy of the universe. Meditation is something you do very very consciously based on Baba's knowledge. That is why Shiv Baba is called yes, the teacher of yoga. Yes, Why? Because he teaches you uh, the truth and then on the basis of the truth when you direct your man and buddhi then you experience the peace and the happiness which is the truth and that is meditation. So this is something you must understand. Meditation is not what they tell you. This is meditation. And then there is a query today. How does one manage one's ambitions and failures? So one thing you must understand. These words are a body conscious creation. When we come to Baba, Baba tells us everything is just a scene in drama. There is no success, there is no failure. Yes, when something happens according to you, at that point of time you consider it to be a success. But what is it? It's just a scene in drama which is predestined. And when something happens which you don't like, according to your sanskar at that point of time you call it a failure but what is it actually it's just a scene in drama predestined 
okay so you have attached unnecessary emotions and unloaded every scene with a lot of interpretation so stop doing that when you look back at your past everything just happened it didn't mean anything the meaning you associated to it was a product of lack of knowledge and you withdraw that meaning to it and just look at it like a scene that passed okay so not only about the scenes that are going on but again you know you have a whole video album of all that happened in the past so when you replay it next what you do is you start looking at it dispassionately so all the passion that you associated to it was meaningless <laughs> so you thought i failed i succeeded i this i that nothing you were there you are here that's it that's it so you now you have to look at your past like that yes and then that is how you manage your failure <laughs> so it's not failure it's not success it's just a scene that passed and then ambition see whatever you are going to get in the future will be based on what you do in the present so if you consider yourself to be ambitious why manage it very good thing you want your future to be great but then you learn the method of it the method is you don't waste any present second i am very ambitious i want to be a deity what greater ambition could you have <laughs> so we are all very ambitious people here <laughs> yeah sitting to and studying to be a deity so we are very pretty ambitious who is more ambitious than us but baba says we are not ambitious ambitious we know the method to how to reach that ambition and the method is don't waste any one second every second fill it with powerful purposeful positive action that's how you that's how you do justice to your ambition yes and i tell you there was one brother and he was a ceo in a company and when i told him you have to study to be a deity he said didi that's pretty ambitious like i thought i would own the company one day but you are next level you people are talking about becoming deities tomorrow so i said but you know we are working harder than you <laughs> so uh, so i think we might even reach and then you know we are working on directions of god so he ensures that no karma we do goes to waste so definitely our ambition is too great but then very very achievable because we know the method that everything happens in time and let me tell you people say there are three aspects of time past present and future but there is only one aspect which is the present because the present becomes the past and the present creates the future so when you know the importance of the present moment then nothing is an ambition everything is just a goal you are reaching every with the passing of every second you're going closer and closer to that goal okay om shanti